James is newly out. How I met James was really strange because I was actually at the gym and his wife Ashley had actually commented on my braids. I just said, oh, you're that girl that, that works on ex-gang members. And that's when she told me that James was in jail and that when he got out, would I be able to help him with different things? And I said, yeah, if they ever needed my help, not only would I help with tattoo removal, but if he needed you know, to get into any type of programming or anything else, that I would help him with that too. Jail's a broken system, hands down. <laughs> you don't learn other than how to be a better criminal or how not to get caught. You know, there's nothing, you're just sitting there on your ass talking to criminals all day. What the f*** you expect to happen? <laughs> like, James Plottinger, 28. Right now, if I didn't have neck tattoos or our hand tattoos, like, I'd look legit. Like, For um, my kids to be more proud to look up to me, right? Like, well, born originals, but a lot of us die copies, right? I do tattoo removal usually two nights a week after working my regular job. My name is Della Stanky, and I'm the redemption artist. Right away, she just makes you feel comfortable just talking with her and everything. Yeah, she's good people. So uh, we started on my hands and my face already. And my hands are like, they're all gang tattoos, man. <laughs> and my whole body's full of gang tattoos. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got them all in. I got them all in the pen. Yeah. Right now, if I didn't have neck tattoos or our hand tattoos, like I look legit. Like I look presentable now. But like the way I, the way I act and the way I am with tattoos, it's not good. Like I know how I look. But if I have my you know arm mode and people see like all my chin, like you know, like I'm trying to I'm trying to be different. So like I, I can't have this. And my parents died, and then I was. Adopted. And my mom was murdered in Stella Block. I was just an angry kid after a while, right? Like, yeah, I grew up like CFS since I was one years old. Bouncing group home, group home. Just around the hood. I then started leaving my yard, I was eight years old. And I started beating up all these kids around the neighborhood. And there's every block as a gang, you know? My first time getting into trouble, I was all juice at school. I was dipping off from the constable. And then I got charged for evading or something at like 12. And then I went to, I was in CFS. And then after that, there was just a lot of in and out on. Because if you dip out from your house at CFS and they, you get a breach every time, right? So you go to jail. You're in and out of jail like that all the time. And you start meeting people in jail like that. So that's just a, that's just a revolving door that's messed up for kids, you know? Yeah. You know, that's the only thing though, is half the time I think that soot tattoos are, I mean, they're, they they look sometimes better only because the ink stays dark. Yeah. <laughs> Deadly. Here's somebody giggling. I got taught by like, this guy when I was like nine, how to steal a car. This kid was like 16, he's like always around the hood, right? And he has some, nerdy white boy that knew how to steal cars and just taught us all how to steal cars as a kid. That's why there were so many car thefts in the early 2000s. There were so many of us little kids just stealing cars and flying around in them. You'd be, I'd be walking down the street and we got so good at it, I'd just spot stolen cars. I'd be like, oh, check it out. We can take, just take this one. <laughs> and then we'd have like lists. Out there, like, that was like between nine and 10 minutes. We were just driving around. We were playing cat and balls. Like, just learning to drive and being dumb fucking kids or anything. And then it went to like, started getting organized with it, started parking them everywhere and like keeping lists and everybody had a list where these cars were. So if we got in high speed chases, you ditch the cops, you go grab that car out of, you mark it off the list, you phone everybody, mark it off the list, you drive away. Yeah. And then we started doing like, B and E's with all these whips and then we started grabbing like work and stuff. But yeah, that's what it all stemmed off of, just stealing cars. We all got picked up all the cases and then started selling drugs and then we started going off from there and then I got involved with guns and <laughs> these are the kind of things I was in and out of jail for. Like, yeah. well, when I was like 15, I was involved in a home invasion and these guys got stabbed up. I ended up getting caught for this and I ended up doing seven years. I did a year of that in the youth center. I got raised to adult and I was doing eight months in Milner. And then I did the rest in like Edmonton Max. 
when I turned 18. That was like my first big one. Yeah, you had to do the whole thing. And that was scary as <laughs> First walking in there straight up, I thought I was gonna die there. I heard stories, you all hear stories when you're a kid growing up, you heard the hell they say about that jail. <laughs> Second day out in GPA, I see these guys get stabbed right up, I was like, okay, man, this is how it's gonna go. <laughs> and they, they, they give you nothing, like, I, at one point I was on my staff time spot, I was in a loud out and I saw the hack up and hack up by my back and shackled and I was only, went to the shower and it was only at six in the morning where all the guards were there. And then I go in my room and I was done for the day. Yeah, I had to ask for toilet paper. They wouldn't give me toilet paper. Yo, man, they were spraying me with a garden hose one time. Man. I was f***ed up. I got out on two stats. Yeah, I got sent in halfway house. I wasn't even allowed to come back to Manitoba. And I dipped out from the halfway house. And then the second time, I didn't even go. And then I was on the run for like five months. And then I got picked up for pro violation. And I went back for two years. In two years and everything got out. When I picked up on charges up north and I got out after six months. I got done a lot of time. Yeah, I did a lot of time. Nah, I met her through my wife. And I was coming out. I don't know how they met. I can't remember the story. But and then I was in jail and she's like, oh, this lady will remove her tattoo. Uh, she seems like good people and stuff, and then I met Della and I got out and she did a session and I said, I just want to make money. I want to be successful with my family. Like, I got family. Like, I want to be with them. I don't want to be in and out of jail. Well, my youngest is two. Yeah, two and a half. And then my other daughter's six. That was the hardest thing, was leaving them. But that's what I mean. Like, you get these youths out of their young. Teach them that you can make money. Like, you don't have to sit in jail forever. <laughs> and then worry, like, man, people were trying to kill me in my sleep in jail. Like, that's how dangerous it is. <laughs> you don't gotta live that life <laughs> just to make a little bit of money. <laughs>